We're felting. What kind of sheep did you say? These are Jacob's. Jacob's sheep. What's up with them? They are a heritage breed, and I'm not exactly sure where they're from, but they're a lovely dual purpose breed. They have sort of a coarse wool um, and a delicious uh, meat, and they're really hardy browsers. So we looked up some instructions online, and we are going to sort of, kind of, <laughs> follow them. Everybody uses the store-bought stuff, and this is this is different. This is like straight off the sheet. What did you, did you wash this? Some of it ended up in the washing machine and got sort of accidentally pretty felted. <laughs> but most of it feels like it, I think, was just sort of cold soaked outside for a few days. I feel like I'm making a like felt wool pizza here. Just like Sharla just mentioned, we just kind of watched some videos and then decided we weren't going to do it that way. <laughs> um, not knowing really what the heck we're doing, but the videos were helpful in sort of the general gist of it, right? Get the felt hot, get it soapy, agitate it to bind the, the knots in the fiber together or bind the little hairs in the fiber together. And I saw people using bamboo um, mats, like a sushi mat, and frog mats like this from my dehydrator, and cloth, and all sorts of things. Uh, most of what I saw, people were being real meticulous with their roving since it was already so neat and organized. They were putting, putting it in 90 degree orientation, real carefully biasing it so that they would get a real even tensile um, stretch and, and shrink and pull across the fibers. And probably, um, I would guess they were really going for consistency and product, like an even thickness of felt. But this is our first try. And I'm not particularly concerned about thickness uh, or consistency. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Especially with those new pieces. How's Charlotte doing? Charlotte's almost ready to wetify her wool pizza. Okay. I think I'm going to follow the recipe a little closer <laughs> than I... Matt will. <laughs> and we'll see what the difference is. I'm pretty good at breaking the rules. I tried to cross the fibers somewhat, you know, in a... You did. Lazy sort of way. And I am going to rub it always in the same direction. Do you have any um, ideas of something you might want to make with film? Oh, man, I just would like have everything I own. <laughs> my felt car. My, my felted <laughs> car, yes. My felt walled tires. I'm ready for that. Yep. It's about a day later and the felt is dry. And this is Matt's felt. And this is my felt. I was at it for probably, what, half an hour longer than he was. And he also kept adding wool because he wanted to make it like really thick. And it sure is thick, but it's also a little bit piecey. And mine is really thin and has some bare patches because I didn't do a particularly good job of laying it out evenly. But I think the two things that are most important are always keeping it really, really soapy and keeping the water pretty darn hot. You can really tell the difference. The dehydrator mesh that we were using, I think it was too, too coarse. The openings were too large, so I eventually switched to using these cheesecloth bags. Having one on each side. I don't think you need it to be a bag, but having the two layers was kind of nice. It turned out okay, and I'm gonna use it to line this sweet hat that Matt gave me. Success! I flipped the hat inside out, cut them into the shape. Fortunately, this has two layers of knit on it, so I just sewed the felt to the back layer so you can't see the stitches on the other side. I like it. Gonna make This is how much felt I have left, so I can make a beard with that. <laughs>